It may not be his previous version, but 2003 Olympia Ronnie Coleman is the single most dominant bodybuilding physique of all time, period. Although this version of his may be unbeatable, there is a way that a certain bodybuilder could defeat O3 Ronnie, and that is by choosing different versions for each mandatory pose depending when and where he looked the best. By the end of this video you're gonna find out if a combination between Jay Cutler's 01, 06 and 09 Mr. Olympia Physiques can win more poses against O3 Ronnie. The King Slayer is a rebooted series on this channel where we're looking for the potential bodybuilder who can defeat Ronnie Coleman's most dominant physique by using multiple versions for each mandatory pose, depending when and where he looked the best. What's different this time is that for each pose we're gonna use video footage instead of uh, still pictures. The downside of this is that footage is usually of a lower quality. But looking at two bodybuilders flexing their muscles in a video footage is always more reliable than a still photo when trying to decide who is the best. Front double biceps and from the front Jay looked the best in 2001 when he allegedly defeated Ronnie in the compulsory round. What Jay's got over Ronnie right here is a better waistline, feathered quads and better calves whereas King Ronnie dominates the guns department with size and details and he's got bigger and symmetric quads. Ronnie also has the overall size advantage. Both have top conditioning. The argument that can be made for Jay to win this pose is the midsection but as Ronnie's midsection does not look all that bad in this piece of footage, he's getting the W in the front double biceps pose. Front lat spread and we continue with 2001 Jay Cutler. With the guns taken out of the equation and more emphasis put on the taper and the waistline, Jay really holds his own here. The truth is that O3 Ron is too big and ripped to lose any pose against anyone. However, having the best tools can mean nothing if you don't use them right. And I'm talking about Ronnie's sloppy execution. The way he's crunching down his neck and mostly because of the contrast between his and Jay's midsections lose him this pose to a flawless Jay Cutler here. So coming out from the two front poses, each of them got one. Now let's check out the side poses. For the side chest, I consider the Jay's best physique to be his 2009 Olympia version. Ron is pretty impossible to beat in the side chest as arguably his weakest point, the midsection gets covered by the hands here. Ron has got a bigger and better chest, arms and shoulders. He also dominates Jay downstairs from this angle so there's not too much Jay can do here. Ronnie gets the point. However, the side triceps is a pose where Ronnie Corman is vulnerable. I believe most of Prime Jay versions would defeat Ronnie in this pose but I went with 0-1 again. Jay wins the lateral head, the midsection and the execution against Ronnie here. So just like from the front, they split the poses from the side as well. Now can Jay win a back pose as well against Ronnie Corman? Normally not, however in 2006 he defeated Ronnie Corman from the back it's true, but against a fallen king let's be honest. Let's see how he fares against Prime Corman from the back. Well, Jay has the size and thickness and his lower back never looked as thick as this here. You could even argue that he beats Ronnie when it comes to the traps in this pose. However. Ronnie's back is still more complete. Moreover, he wins the guns again and he also destroys Jay with uh, them glute hams. Jay's got the calves for what is worth. Overall, Ronnie is still untouchable in this pose and gets the point. Back lat spread and it's a pity for that bad lighting from uh, 2006 Mr. Olympia. Jay looked really incredible from the back at this show. Jay is considered to have had a weak back, but OCJ would defeat a lot of greats from the back, but not the greatest of them all, unfortunately for him. Ronnie Coleman remains untouchable from the back and breaks the pattern so far winning both poses from the back, thus gaining a 2 point lead in this comparison. Jay is catching some ground in the abs and thighs though, this 2009 quad stomp alone wins him this pose against Ronnie. 
Ron is big and has some of the greatest ties ever, but Jay arguably has uh, even better ones and he also wins the app department. Let's just ignore Dexter here, who probably would defeat both of them in this pose. So Jay wins the pose and gets only one point behind Ronnie with one more pose to go. The most muscular. Before we judge this pose, I wanna point out the obvious. Jay cannot win more poses against Ronnie anymore, as Ronnie already got 4 out of 8 poses. But for Jay to get a tie against O3 Corman, even in these circumstances, would be more than impressive, so let's check out this last pose. In 2009, Jay had the best most muscular, arguably one of the best uh, and most impressive of all time from any bodybuilder. A pose in which he didn't usually dominate. He's got the better traps here and the more striated shoulders and of course, the midsection is a big advantage over Ronnie. However, Ronnie dominates again with sheer size, wherein the most muscular should count the most. Ronnie is thicker, fuller, more dominant overall and once again, the only real argument that can be made against him here is the waist, which again does not look all that bad in order for him to lose such a dominant pose. So he gets the win. So Ronnie Corman defeats Jay Cutler 5-3, meaning Jay is not the king slayer. Quite impressive for Jay to win 3 poses against this unbeatable version of King Ronnie Corman though, but unbeatable for how long? Let me know in the comment section what bodybuilder should be next in line for the crown using the same concept, meaning different versions for different poses. Also like the video if you enjoyed it, remember this also helps the channel a lot, subscribe and as always, thank you guys and see you next time.